Hey guys, so if you're willing to monitor your PostgreSQL database server, you are in the right place. We'll be configuring this monitoring from the scratch by using the Zabbix server. Um, latest version that we can have at the moment when this video was created, which is 5.4. If when you're watching this, there are newer versions, don't worry, all of that is still going to work. So basically, if you don't have a Zabbix yet, you can go to the Zabbix.com click the big green download button and just a couple of steps to get it up and running. If that still is a problem, you can search in a YouTube how to install the Zabbix server and you will find also mine video. And the most important is don't forget that the Zabbix is absolutely free. You don't need to pay any money. Like you can get this up and running in like 10 minutes and configuring the PostgreSQL monitoring will also not take more than 10 minutes. So let's not waste any time and let's get starting to actual configuration part. There are two official monitoring ways how you can monitor the PostgreSQL database. One is with a Zabbix Agent 2 and the second that we are going to be using in this video is uh, Zabbix Agent 1 and the monitoring is achieved with the user, user parameters. So I hope that you already have your Zabbix server up and running. You will need an access to the front end. Uh, you also need an access to your Postgres server. So I hope that is also up and running. I myself am running uh, Postgres SQL 12. And you will also need a Zabbix agent. Keep in mind that the, the Zabbix will be doing all the monitoring with the Postgres user. So first of all, if this is like a scratch database, we need to create this user that will be used by the Zabbix. And to do that, we just need to um enter in the postgres sql shell and uh, then just execute a simple commands like create user zabbix monitor uh, with password uh, let's make it zabbix and inherit and then what we're going to do we're going to grant a pg monitor uh, to zabbix monitor user that we just created. These are the only steps that we need to do inside a database. So after these two steps, we're good to go exit and uh, exit also from the Postgres user. So then you're going to need uh, the Zabbix templates and we can go in this directory. Remember, you can find all the Zabbix templates in the git.zabbix.com. And uh, I can even show you that right here. So if we go to um, git.zabbix.com, then to the templates, then in the database, uh, there is a PostgreSQL folder. So uh, we have a PostgreSQL folder inside it and also the configuration file and uh, uh, YAML template itself and also the definition a description how to install it basically the same stuff we're covering right now in the video so the next thing that we need to do we need to make sure that we have this uh, PostgreSQL folder from the git on our machine with our Zabbix agent and uh, I have it here in the Zabbix dash templates uh, then we have a templates folder and CD database and the same PostgreSQL so here we have PostgreSQL folder, the configuration file, and the template itself. And what we basically have to do is copy this PostgreSQL folder that contains uh, all the SQL uh, queries that will be used for the monitoring, and we need to copy it to the home directory of our Zabbix agent, which is var lib Zabbix. But by default, um, this folder is not created yet. So if we would check uh, var lib um, Zabbix, it is created because I created it in advance. But in your case, if it is not there, then you must create it, uh, grant uh, proper permissions. So since it's going to be used by the Zabbix agent, uh, to the var lib Zabbix uh, 755. And yeah, so what we need to do right now, we need to copy our PostgreSQL folder to, uh, let's make another directory in um, var lib zabbix Postgres, Postgres SQL, Postgres SQL, and then uh, copy all the contents of our current folder to the var lib our lib Zabbix uh, Postgres SQL so it should be like this and now we can check in the var lib 
Zabbix Postgres SQL, we have all the SQL files that our Zabbix agent is going to use to do the monitoring. Then in the same locations like uh, Zabbix templates, um, templates uh, database Postgres is the same place where we just was uh, there is also the template DB Postgres SQL configuration file which contains um, all the user parameters that will be using the SQL queries and again with the help of these user parameters we will do all the monitoring so we need to copy this um, template DB Postgres SQL config file to the folder Etsy Zabbix Zabbix agent D dot D directory and that's it right just make sure that it's there let's see zabbix zabbix agent d dot d yes the file is there and then uh the most important thing well not the most important but it is important so we will be connecting to our postgres so make sure that so find minus name pg hba dot conf there it is. Uh, so make sure that the user that we will be using, um, in our case, the Zabbix monitor to do the monitoring has actually access to access our Postgres database. I did like not the most secure uh, solution. So I am accepting the connections from absolutely all the IP addresses uh, with the Zabbix user with the trust method. So no deeper authentication for the security purposes. When this is done, we just need to create a password file because remember we created our um, Zabbix monitor user with a password Zabbix and uh, there will Will be no place in the front end where we should define it so we need to create a pg pass in again var lib um, zabbix location call it pg pass i actually already have it so i did not delete it with the format where we define first of all ip address of the database to which we're going to connect and monitor then the port then postgres user uh, which we're going to use to connect to it and the password which in our case is Zabbix. Also make sure that the permissions to your uh, PG pass files are exactly like this so this should be uh, 0600 otherwise you will receive a notification uh, just a warning message that uh, the permissions are not uh, the most secure and this warning message will break absolutely all the logic uh, for the official template so the monitoring will not work and after we configure this so basically what we did is uh, we copy paste the Postgres directory to our Zabbix agent home directory we edited the pghba.conf pgh file to allow access for the monitor user and we created a pg password file that's it so just a couple of things then we can go back to our front end and basically we need need to create a host i will call it uh Postgres sql monitoring uh, for the groups we can use just for the sake of example the linux server and uh, we need an interface agent and we will add a postgres sql uh, by user parameter template so click add and you see we have 40 items 11 triggers and one low level discovery rule uh, we can see what items we will be actually getting with our monitoring so the buffers the max written per second uh, bg write yeah the get bg writer get queries config hash and a lot of different items different match and then after waiting for roughly a minute you should see that your zabbix icon turns green you can refresh it uh, if it doesn't turn green if it is red then there is some sort of problem and just hover this and uh, click to get an error message to see what is actually happening and also make sure that all of your items here are enabled and supported and they don't have a red cross here right on this side if there is a red cross it means that the item is not supported and if you want some sort of the help then uh, check what is the error message of the item and uh, write it in the comments I will try to give you some hints so after it is green and all the items are supported you can go to the monitoring latest data search for your Postgres SQL monitoring host and you can see that we are receiving all the data uh, it's not very interesting in my case simply because it is just um, testing Postgres without any actual traffic or any actual databases and also the last thing is 
is like if you go to the configuration host to the PostgreSQL monitoring that we just created uh, to the macro section and check the inherited and host macroses, you can see all the user macroses that are being used, like the uh, thresholds for the triggers, the PG cache hit ratio, minimal warning is 90, um, PG host, the IP address of the host that you want to monitor. So it's not, if it is not a local host in your case, then you need to change this value. How to do that, just click change and then write a new one um, port also if you're not using the default one feel free to change it uh, user uh, no need to define a password here remember we created a pg pass file for that so that's about it how you can monitor your postgresql database um, very simple steps if something is not clear just uh, let me know in the comments i will try to help you and uh, Thank you for watching. I hope that this was helpful and we're going to see you in the next video. So thank you guys and goodbye.